Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons. In this quick guitar tricks, we're looking at six rules that teach you how to play a basic walk and bass line with chords. Rule number one, choose your chord progression. I'm going with a two, five, one, four in G major. A minor seven, D dominant seven, G major seven, C major seven. Rule number two, your thumb will play single notes on the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Fingers pluck the rest of the chord on the and of one as well as the end of three. I'm playing it swung here. But you could play it straight if you wanted to. The root should always be in the first beat. The third and the second beat can change, they can be the root as well, but we'll come to that a little bit later on. As a bonus rule, try to let the first chord ring and then stick out of the second chord attack. To recap those, let's take a look at the chord progression and apply this fingering style. Like I tried to do with all my Quick Tricks videos, this is going to be a fairly condensed lesson, so it might be worthwhile pausing the video to try stuff out. Having said that, when it sounds alright, let's just move on to the next set of rules. Rule number three, chromatic approach. Try coming at the root from a semitone below, or above. First off, let's just stick to from above on the fourth beat of the bar. I'm going to mix them up a bit. We can also play a chromatic approach on the second beat of the bar as well as the fourth. it started to sound a bit like the real thing. If you play a chromatic approach on the second beat, you probably want the one on the fourth beat to be approaching from the other side. So rather than both being from above, or below, you want to switch them. So if you do the semitone above on the second beat, play a semitone below on the fourth beat, and vice versa. Which leads us nicely to rule number four. Vary the movements as much as you can. A great way of thinking this is like a butterfly in flight. It's got a clear goal in mind, but it'll take an unpredictable path to get there. So, what other paths can we take? Okay, rule number five, try going up the scale. I'm going to approach from a semitone above on the fourth beat, and then use the first three notes of the scale. this shape over the A minor, this over the D, and the same shape just moved for G and C. You can obviously refinger this, but I'd suggest using this as a starting point for a bit of consistency. Okay, rule number six, slide the whole chord or just the fingers. Sliding down a semitone, then back up generally sounds best. If I approach from a semitone above, then do a chord slide. Mm -hmm. 
I quite often just pick the notes with my fingers for the slide. Because the root's kind of ringing already and sometimes I find it a bit overpowering otherwise, but that's more of a personal preference than anything else. And to recap all of those rules, pick a chord progression. Thumb the main beats of the bar, fingers on the and of one, and also the and of three. Chromatic approach. Come at the root from a semitone below or a semitone above. Vary the moves so it's a bit more jazzy and less riffy. Unless you want a riffy sound, I suppose. Try ascending the scale and also slide the chord. It's unlikely you'll get full improvisational freedom overnight if you're new to this, but one thing you can do that helps is plot out some tables to follow. So only a chromatic approach on the fourth beat of the bar, a great place to start off with this. Chromatic approaches on the second and the fourth beat of the bar, and the chromatic approach can be either above or below, you just decide as you're doing it. Chromatic approaches, chord slides and the scale. I've put the chord changes in this last one as well, the numbers being the beat of the bar and the key in the side can tell you what every abbreviation means. A digital table like this is really easy to edit, so you can mix it up and practice all sorts of different combinations until you can happily, freely switch between them on the fly. Cool, so that's a quick overview on how you can write or improvise a walking bass line. This has been Quick Tricks, that's the playlist up there. Check out some of the other stuff I've done, hit subscribe, leave a comment, it'd be great to get some more guitar chat going. But yeah, share, like and enable notifications with that little bell on the side, if you feel so inclined. Cheers guys.